Good morning, Coasties, and welcome to Sunday. It is indeed Sunday. Hopefully it's going to be a beautiful Sunday for you guys. It's the beginning of a new week, beginning of a new day. Welcome to breakfast. If you happen to be getting out of bed right now, welcome to uh, an opportunity that awaits. I don't know what kind of opportunities that is for you. Hopefully something beautiful is in store, and I hope you're going to be looking ahead to a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of joy, a lot of good things. Uh, I hope you've had a good week so far. Welcome back to Sunday. I'm here each Sunday morning. My name's Lindy. I'm your Sunday morning host here at Rima CC. And I want to say welcome. Welcome again to yet another week of big conversations. Guys, before we get started, we were just listening to My Jesus by Ann Wilson. And uh, I love her stuff at the moment. I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's, you know, it doesn't really, I wasn't really a country bumpkin to start off with. Maybe I've just become that over time being married to my husband because to his core, he is a bit of a country bumpkin. And Anne Wilson certainly puts her stuff out there that's got that whole country flair, a bit of country, a bit of gospel, got a bit of things that I, yeah, surprises me that I have grown an interest in. So uh, it's weird how life evolves and how we change our interests, change things, start to make sense and we sort of uh, work out what, you know, different flavours, different uh, experiences, different sounds, they're all appealing. Anyway, I have waffled on for long enough. I want to get into it this morning with a bit of an explanation. If you're catching up from, well, if you haven't been with us for a few weeks, we've actually been talking big things. We've been talking life and the, you know, the way of honouring life and the fact that life is a gift. Life is one of those things that um, when you're in the, the muck and the mire and all that sort of stuff, it can be, it can be really hard to look beyond that and f sort of focus in on the hope and the joy that can be found in life. And um, I don't know about you guys, but yeah, those times can certainly knock us around. I think it's really important to talk to other people, to kind of get in some insight into their walk and the things that they've been exposed to, the situations that have come up and how that has impacted who they are where they're going in life, the decisions they're going to make from here. I think that's one of the most vital ways that we can draw on on that call for us to really connect with our communities, just to hear each other. And over the next few weeks, and we spoke to Georgia last week, I, I'm planning to speak to a few different people on their sort of perception of life. And that's a big one. It really is a huge topic, obviously. It's, it's so broad. But I think different experiences can shape us and can help us to navigate how we see life and so I this week was kind of reminded I actually saw was on actually the Rima CC uh, Facebook page so if you've not you know checked that out before have a little look but I had a look this week and one of the things that got to me was not got to me but encouraged me and stirred me and made me think yeah I know what I want to do this Sunday was in regards to International Youth Day um, and I as I said I'm not really sure who wrote this I don't know if I'm not don't even know but uh, basically what they have written is just um, go and check it out but it's basically emphasizing the importance of ensuring our youth know their value and they know that they are being heard and that we empower them and we encourage them to step up into situations or opportunities and we just we allow them to play around with you know how things are going to look for them as they step into the next the next sort of uh, sense of responsibility, they are the generation to come and they've got some, some big influence in, in how that happens and we have a certain responsibility in encouraging that. Guys, I just want to start with 1 Timothy 4, 12 to 16. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to teaching, to not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders lay their hands on you. Practice these things, immerse yourself in them so that, in, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Um, I read that because I just think we don't realise what, um, how powerful our our time as a youth can be and we have a responsibility to to do the right thing and to promote those in our churches the the youth that we see the hope that we see in them and to to do exactly that go and lay our hands on them and 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 speak life into them it really is about speaking life into them now this week my um well actually a couple of weeks ago my daughter actually she heard that i was doing stuff on life and she said to me oh i'd be happy to do that you know from a younger person's perspective and i went Oh, 
I wasn't going to ask you because I didn't think, I didn't want to put you in a position where you felt like you had to do it. So I, I didn't ask. And the fact that she came to me and said, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm in, like, let's, let's do this. Um, I went, I have to jump on this. So you guys will have heard about my, my girl, Abigail. I've got a few girls. I've got lots, actually. Uh, but Abigail is number three, so she goes by Abby. You guys have probably heard a fair bit along the way about uh, our journey, especially this year. Um, but she's volunteered to come in here this morning and, um, yeah, have a chat to us about youth, the things that she's been exposed to herself, the things that she sees amongst other youth issues and that sort of stuff. And we're going to chat to her a bit more. I'm going to just ask her really quickly in this little section here, Abby, um, Firstly, thank you for putting your hand up to do this because I know it's quite brave. And thank you for having me. Oh, <laughs> time. Um, but yeah, I, I guess for us to really focus in today, as in looking at quality of life, we've got to know what's going on for our youth. So certain issues that you would see, or you think that you are more exposed to as a youth. Abby's 18, so she's still amongst all of it. Um, but what sort of things, or what sort of sort of scenarios are you? aware of that we probably need to be mindful of too. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that I can think of is social media. Um, social media has a really big impact on everyone nowadays, um, but especially the youth. Um, social media has a very big impact on body image uh, for a lot of women and not just women, men as well. Um, there is a certain body type that's out on social media um, that puts a perception of the perfect body um, and a lot of men struggle with that in a sense that that is what they see everywhere. They see bodies like that, they see the ideal perfect body so when they see a real natural body that is not real life, that is not how it actually is um, and you know, on social media nowadays, you can change any photo to look however you want. Uh, you can change absolutely anything. And the natural body is not shown on the internet anymore. Mm. And I think that is one of the biggest problems um, that we are leaning towards, you know, all of these fake body types that aren't actually realistic and they are really, really hard to achieve. And... Yeah, I just think that's a really big problem because it's just seen as what's normal nowadays, yep. but it is actually not normal and that is not actually how most women or most men, their bodies actually look. So it feels like it's a pressure coming from the outside. Yeah, I would say so and I would just say it just it just creates many insecurities for young people nowadays because, mm. you know, you look at all these people with thousands of followers and you think, wow, I want to look like that, but... Nine, ten, nine times out of ten, it's not realistic. It's not how they actually look how, all the time and they don't show their bad days, the days they're struggling, the days they don't look the best. Um, so it's just putting out this idea of the perfect life, mm. whereas that, that is not how it actually is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So wait, I'm just going to just ask really quickly, you're obviously, is that something that's you are more aware of now or is it something you've been seeing throughout your whole teen years? It's something I've seen throughout my whole teen years. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm more focused on it now. Um, I believe now there's just more and more apps like TikTok, Instagram that just show more and more unrealistic bodies and I feel like it is happening a lot more than it was before um, but obviously when I was younger I didn't worry about that as much and as you get older you tend to start to worry about what you look like yeah. um, so I would say it has been around for quite some time but it is becoming a lot more of a common thing nowadays and it's very normalized um, to post you know half naked photos it is now just normal and it is actually encouraged instead of seen as inappropriate. Mm, which is actually really terrifying because yeah. there's so much more to people than the physical. Yeah, and that's right. And I feel like nowadays it is more about the physical than what someone actually is and what they are as a person. Mm. So it is really, really encouraged to see people's bodies. And you will notice most of the time a woman that posts, you know, inappropriate photos, she will have hundreds and thousands more followers than someone who just posts photos of them 
you know, just enjoying life. Yeah, so it's getting the attention that she she's craving in some yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's, we're going to leave it there for a little bit, but that's obviously certainly, that, you know, that that's one aspect of what we're going to cover this morning is, is that external pressure for teens or youth, young people to be be what they think other people want them to be. There's an external pressure. And I would naturally think, we're going to go into it a bit further, but I would naturally think that's got to play around with uh, a lot of psychological sort of stuff too, I think. We're going to hold it there for a bit, guys. I'll be back shortly and we're going to talk more things, quality of life for our youth and how do we encourage them, how do we empower them, how do we... How do we help them get through this, these extra pressures? All right, see you guys soon. Welcome back, guys. That was Broken People by Johnny Diaz. I'm Lindy, guys. I'm your Sunday morning host here at MLCC. Welcome aboard. Welcome to Sunday. Welcome to a new beginning and hopefully a new beginning with plenty of hope for you guys. Hopefully you... There's a lot of hopes in there. Uh, looking forward to... A great day. Hoping, yeah, hoping for your sake you are looking forward to a really good week and, yeah... I am. I'm enjoying my morning here with my number three kid. Uh, her name is Abby, and she's joining me here this morning. We're talking a little bit different. So the, the last few weeks we've been talking about the quality of well, We've been talking about life and honouring life. And I think a component of doing that is looking at look at the pressures in life, the the different aspects of life, the different ages and stages. And Abby is 18, so Abby is kind of She's amongst all that sort of young people stuff. So we just spoke to Abby in the last little section. We were talking about, um, you know, what sort of things she's exposed to or the people that she, in her world, what sort of pressures that, you know, she's come across in her everyday stuff. And we've been chatting about the, the pressures even just to look a certain way because you've got social media constantly in your face going, you should be this, you should be this, you should be this. And obviously the, the flip side of that is that, those who are viewing it are drawn in to a point where it can be incredibly uh, captivating and it can be almost controlling. It become, can become a situation of addiction in a lot of cases. There can be, a, a, you know, you've got that dopamine hit that, that all of a sudden the, the chemicals in the brain change and that need to have that instant and constant gratification is there. So we're battling a lot of sort of things and obviously our youth are, are copying that a lot more. But Abby, I just want to again say thank you for coming in and just talking about this real stuff. Uh, talking basically on that, uh, you know, when we're talking brain chemicals and all that sort of stuff, that's kind of a flow on from where we've been this morning. I can only imagine that um, the pressures from social media can really mess with, with thinking, can mess with, um, you know, mental health in general. Is that something that you would say is, in your sort of observation, would you say that that's a reality? Yeah, absolutely. I would definitely say um, social media creates this idea of a perfect body type, the idea of a perfect lifestyle, um, and it makes you believe that you are not fitting in that. You are not fitting in that perfect lifestyle, so you don't belong, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it definitely creates... Um, it creates a barrier between you and the perfect lifestyle it makes you feel as if you don't fit in yeah. um it makes you feel if if you're not a part of it um and you can't achieve that and that absolutely creates you know um self-esteem issues creates anxiety i know for myself um it led to a lot of bullying so you know if someone doesn't look like the perfect ideal body or perfect lifestyle, unfortunately, they tend to get bullied. Mm -hmm. And it is really, really sad. Um, but it's just, I believe these photos and videos are just pushing to youth that this is what's perfect. And if you don't fit that, then you're not a part of it. And, you know, that creates a lot of problems. It creates a lot of insecurities, a lot of um, feeling left out, feeling alone. One of the biggest things social media does is makes you feel alone mm. and makes you feel like you are missing out on things. So you see images of people having so much fun together, going out together, and you just go, well, I'm not a part of that. Yeah, so it's exclusion. Yeah, it, it yeah. makes you feel really excluded, really alone. Um, and social media also shows that, oh, I've got so many friends. I have so many people. Yeah. 
So for it's someone, almost a fake reality, isn't it? Yes, it is fake. It is fake. And don't get me wrong, some people can have a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but for people like me, I don't like to talk to a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, I'm quite introverted. So, you know, I don't have a lot of people. And I've now grown to be okay with that. Yeah. But social media does push on you that you need a lot of people in your life to be happy. Mm. Um, and you need to go out all the time to be happy. You need to... Um, have the perfect body to be happy you need to have heaps of money to be happy so it just pushes all these things and thankfully I have learnt that that is not the truth but many youth believe that's the truth yeah um, especially I worry for younger girls and younger boys that are growing up now yeah. and they see these things and they will start to believe that's the truth mm. because that is all that's been pushing on them. So what do you think prevents that? How do, we, how do we counteract that? I think a really good thing that has started um, on social media is different platforms of people showing their real life and yeah. showing the real struggles. Um, I really, really am all for... There's been a lot of women showing their real bodies nothing fake yeah and not inappropriate just in a way that they're saying this is natural yeah. you know cellulite um body fat all different little parts of your body yeah. that is natural and yeah. i'm all for showing what real life is actually about um and it's funny you, you weren't always that way with me <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't no, it doesn't always like me talking like that, but that's all right. I'm her mum, so it's going to happen. Yeah, she's my mum, so that's just what happens. Yeah. <laughs> but I think just really pushing against the ideal body type, the ideal lifestyle, um, and just showing what it's like to live a normal life, yeah. if that makes sense. Absolutely. And just so showing, keeping it real, really. Yeah, just keeping it real, showing that you don't need heaps of people. Yeah. You don't need heaps of money. You don't need heaps of things. You can still be happy without it. Absolutely. Some pretty insightful words there, guys. I have to say that when I hear her talking like that, I'm like, oh, cool, we've done a good job. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we've. I will just end with this, and it's just a mum comment, but I'm just going to throw it out there because the reality is if you saw Abby, she's one of these girls, like, she, I, as a kid, she'd always have, People coming to me and say, oh, I like that one's just so, such a beautiful girl. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm still not letting her get away with stuff just because she's smiling at you. So, so to hear her talking about this and to hear her, her expressing that she feels this pressure and, you know, it's, it's a common thing for people in her age range to be feeling this pressure to, you know, put on this um, facade and, you know, a lot of people don't get that there is more to life than that. And that's what we're sort of sitting on this morning is that quality of life. How do we how do we encourage our youth to see that there is more to it? Stick with us this morning. We're going to do some more digging, some more chatting, some more um, exploring, I guess. Uh, but thank you, Abby. And I'll, yeah, we'll be back shortly, guys. See ya. That was Rejoice by Andrew Ripp, guys. Welcome to Rima CC. Welcome to another day, another chance, another opportunity. And... My goodness, life is a good thing. It's a gift. It's a, an honour and it's something to be honoured. Life is, is to be honoured. Uh, this morning, we are doing things a little bit differently. And my number three kid put her hand up. I didn't even have to ask her. She actually volunteered to kind of tag along and help me this morning and sort of go into this, this exploration of life from a youth standpoint. Obviously, she's a lot younger than I am. Um, I'm kind of glad about that because I look back and think, oh my goodness, that's, that was quite a journey. So unfortunately for her, she's got the same, same journey ahead of her. But I think, oh my goodness, those years can be so messy and so complicated. And so, you know, the, the, the pressures that they have to deal with are different to what we had. We had pressures, we had different kinds of pressures. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a different world and there's a lot more, it's bigger, it's, it's broader. It's, um, we've talked this morning, Abby's explained, you know, social media and, and the influence that can have on, on how we, or how they, sorry, perceive themselves, how they perceive their bodies uh, and, you know, how messy that can like become. And obviously down to mental health, we've discussed a little bit about that. One thing I wanted to emphasise before was um, in, in terms of mental health and the impact of that with 
um, suicide is just huge for our youth. In 2022, uh, 304 Australian young people took their own lives. Uh, 77 deaths by suicide occurred among children and adolescents, and that was between, sorry, that was aged 17 and below, with the majority occurring in those aged being between 15 and 17 years. Uh, and um, if another statistic we've got here is death by sorry death by suicide represented 30.9 percent of all deaths in young people, which is ridiculously huge, uh, and that was aged 15 to 17 years, and 32.4 percent of all deaths in these in those aged between 18 and 24 years, up to 16.5 percent and 23.9 per cent respectively of all deaths in these age groups in 2001. So it's it's terrifying just looking at statistics and I just want to encourage you guys if you are someone who is is you know you might be a parent who is who's really dealing with this it's it can be quite an intense thing um, to have to watch and I want to just recommend again, we've got Lifeline is 13 11 14. That's a contact number if you need to just check in with someone or if you yourself are in a position where you're struggling. But that's not what we're on about today. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about flipping those thoughts and moving to a place of hope. Um, but to do that, we need to recognise where we've been. Uh, I know for myself, when I was working as a counsellor up in, back in uh, Western Sydney, I was witness to... Um, a scene in a park that was just flowers just filled the park and it, I mean like it filled it was the the playground itself was covered in flowers the whole grass area was filled in with flowers it was just this real honor of something terrible had happened there and I'm sure you guys can read between those lines um, and those who were left behind were left to mourn and to try and work out how they honour this situation. So we're honouring life in this in this sort of realm this morning in whatever way we can. So we're talking real deep stuff and Abby has certainly had her own, own journey with mental health um, ups and downs, haven't you Abby? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so <laughs> what, how comfortable are you to talk about it? Like, and what, what do you want to share with those who are listening this morning? I am now very comfortable talking about this. Um, it's taken me a long time, um, but I have had my own personal issues um, dealing with suicidal thoughts. Um, another thing that is very common, sadly, for youth nowadays is self-harm. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I had to deal with that as well. Um, I dealt with many many days where I wanted everything to end yeah um, and fortunately I had my family there to support me a lot of people don't a lot of people don't have anyone mm. um, and I was very fortunate to have always have someone there for me um, but it is a real struggle for many youth Absolutely. and um, it is actually sadly normalized mm. so I remember when I was Oh, back in year seven, um, it was normal to self-harm. Yeah. And it was a normal way of seeking attention and that should not be normalised at all. Um, being suicidal was a normal way of getting attention. Yeah. Again, that should not be normalised at all. So I think my biggest concern is that for youth now, it is so normal to feel that way but to not get any help. Yeah. So no one is pushing for youth to get help. Mm. They're just pushing for youth to feel that way, if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, I don't believe suicide and self-harm is talked about, and talked about enough in schools. Yeah. I don't believe it's talked about enough in life, and I believe it is very pushed over if that makes sense it's very hidden it's a quick topic yeah. and it's a sensitive topic so no one wants to talk about it yeah so they just push it to the side and that is the easy option yeah. um and there are many things that in schools and in everyday life are pushed away and pushed to the side that shouldn't be so you know um abusive relationships sexual relationships suicidal thoughts self-harm all of those things are just pushed to the side because they're a sensitive topic too hard too hard to talk about 
no one wants to say the wrong thing. Yeah. No one wants to upset someone. So let's just not mention it. Yeah. And I think that is a really big concern because with this new social media of pushing the perfect lifestyle, pushing how you should live, how you should look, Obviously, as I mentioned before, that causes a lot of mental health issues. Yeah. That causes a lot of serious insecurities. And unfortunately for a lot of people, it can cause suicidal thoughts and people can act on that. Yeah. And youth need to be shown how to deal with that. And I believe we're not shown enough how to deal with that. Um, thankfully, like I said, I had my family who helped me, but if I didn't have them, I wouldn't know what to do mm. because it's just so pushed to the side, too scary to talk about. So I think we really need to start talking about it and really asking our youth how they actually are. Yeah. Um, you know, you can walk into the shops and say, hey, how are you going? But everyone says good. Yeah. Everyone says, I'm good, how are you? But actually sitting down with someone you're close to and just saying how are you actually going mm. and I've had those conversations with my parents and those are the times where I really just broke down and said I'm not okay yeah. and I really need help and there's been a lot of times I'm going to kind of draw things up because I know we're running out of time in this little part here but there have been times where I have mentioned stuff happening with Abby here and I've left that period of your life Abby very private because yeah. I think that's your your world to be able to, you know when you're ready to talk about it yeah Absolutely. So it's so encouraging to hear her talking about that time in her life. It was terrifying as a parent to not know how to handle it. And as a parent, it is incredibly difficult because my my husband and I were butting heads constantly amongst all this, you know, this pressure. It was it was awful. It was a really turbulent time. We were he wanted to do, to do things one way. I wanted to do things another way. We're trying to do the best thing we could by her. So when you've got a, an adolescent or a, a young person who is struggling with this stuff themselves, the pressures on the family can be huge too. But you're trying to support, you're trying to listen to them and engage them and go, where is your life at at the moment? How do we best help you and support you? It's, it's, a, it's a horrible time. So if you're in that, I just want to encourage you. I'm sitting here in front of my daughter right now and I... I wasn't going to push. I went, you know, if you want to talk about this, this is your thing. Um, if you don't want to, I respect that too. But she's openly sharing with you guys the journey that she's been on and the, the themes that are a part of that. Are, she's right. We need to start talking. We need to talk, start, you know, start talking real stuff and not be afraid to go there. And I just, yeah, it's huge that you are able to do that. So good job. Good job, Thank my you. friend. <laughs> I've got more stuff I want to um, explore with Abby uh, in our next little section. We've got a new beginning coming up and we're going to talk a bit deeper again. So, uh, yeah, we'll give you an update. But you're, I think you're, just to close things off, what I said initially when I said I was going to do month of August with honouring life, Abby's exactly right. It's about turning those those normal concepts of this, it's almost like this uh, thriving death culture. We've got to flip it. We've got to turn the, the, the thing, turn the camera around and start seeing things differently. We've got to focus on life because it is a gift. It is an honour to be able to be given breath in our lungs, to be given that a heart that is still beating. You know, I'm going to explore further with you guys this morning with her, um, you know, in terms of her experiences. But I know when she had her accident, being able to tickle the, the bottom of her foot and she could feel it. You know, there is a gift in all of those sorts of things. We've got to flip our thinking. We've got to fight back and we've got to start saying life is to be honoured. Guys, I'll leave it there. I'll be back before too long. We'll see you about 9.15. I'll see you soon. And welcome back, Coasties. That was Love by We Are Messengers. Oh, I love love. I don't know about you guys. I love love. I think love is pretty fantastic. And if you look at it from a scriptural perspective, love is all things that the world doesn't necessarily, you know, observe as love. Love is patience. Love is kindness. Love is goodness. Love is so much that we don't comprehend or don't see in our everyday world. But love is a gift and so is life. And that's what we're talking about today. We are talking uh, here at Rima CC. I'm Lindy. I'm with my daughter, Abby. Um, I didn't even have to, didn't have to tag her on, like I didn't have to call her in or anything. She just put her hand up and said, I'm willing to come and chat. So that's um, pretty encouraging itself. We're talking young people, youth. We're talking quality of life. We're combining the two. It was International Youth Day this week. And I thought, what an opportunity to sort of tie in that 
um, reality, that, that sort of observation of youth, and the fact that we have a responsibility to, to listen to them. You know, what's going on for them, the pressures that are, are felt, what's life look like for, for our youth? And honour that, that stage, you know, that, that, um, that time in life that has, you know, it's kind of that make or break for the rest of your life in a lot of ways. It's like, you know, making decisions about where am I going, what am I doing and all that sort of stuff. This morning we've covered a few different issues already. We've spoken um, down to pressures. We've spoken about things that our youth are exposed to through social media, body image, that sort of thing. Um, we've spoken about mental health. We've sadly discussed a bit of the, you know, the realities of, um, of you know, dire mental health and, and the fact that suicide amongst youth is so high, which is terrifying. Uh, and we have talked also, which is really encouraging because Abby was the one that kind of mentioned how we have to flip that. We need to flip the, the concept of this is normal, this is an option to a place of this is not an option. Life is to embraced, to be embraced. Life is to be nurtured. Life is to be honoured and respected and really treasured. And life is. Um, you guys will have heard, if you listen on a Sunday morning or if you happen to listen to the podcast, I know I've got a few people who send me messages from, through the week saying, hey, I listened to the things this week. Oh, I'm so, it's so encouraging to hear what's going on you know, in your world. And Abby has certainly been a part of that this, this year because, um, yeah, I've been as real as I possibly can and gone, this is our family situation. And for you guys, you'd know Abby as my number three kid who had an accident at the beginning of this year. Abby, what do you want to share with our listeners about that particular day? Yeah, so I'll just give a rough idea of what happened just for anyone who's unsure. So um, unfortunately in February, I was involved in a car accident. Um, it was a very much an accident. It was not anyone doing the wrong thing. It was just an accident. Um, but unfortunately, I broke, I fractured three vertebrae in my back. Um, I fractured my wrist and two of my ribs on the right side. Um, and in a split second, everything changed for me. Yeah. Or a lot changed for me. Um, and I think one thing I really wanted to talk about was how much I, I didn't realise how much I took for granted before the accident happened. Yeah. So once I fractured my back, um, I had to receive a spinal fusion. I also received uh, sur surgery on my wrist. Um, but the spinal fusion was definitely uncomfortable, definitely something very serious. Um, so I spent the next 10 days in bed um, I couldn't sit up for probably nine of those days. Um, I couldn't really move. I could lay there flat and look at the ceiling. Yeah. Um, and I did not realise how much I took for granted until this happened. So obviously uh, once I injured my back, I could no longer walk anymore. I could no longer go and use the toilet. Um, I could hardly feed myself um, and one of my biggest problems was privacy. I didn't realise how much I took privacy for granted mm. because all of a sudden everyone had to see my body to help me, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. I had to have other people wash me, other people, you know, help me use the toilet, other people feed me and I did not realise how much I took that for granted before. Mm. I didn't realise how much I took getting up and going to the toilet for yeah. granted. Yeah. Those little tiny things in life that I would never think about before, I think about all the time now. Yeah. And um, going on the topic of uh, suicide, as we were talking about before, when I got in my accident, I had a psychiatrist come and speak to me and she said, she asked me, do you want to end your life? And I said, I can't do that. I can't do that. That's not an option because I could have never walked again. I could not be alive. I, anything could have happened to me. Yeah. And I am so lucky in obviously a very unfortunate situation. I can get up and I can walk again. Yeah. I can go and use the toilet by myself. I can feed myself. So um, 
I've gone through a lot of physio, a lot and a lot of effort to get back to where I am now. But I am so thankful that I have gone back to this place. Mm. And it has really made me feel for people who can't do those simple things, who can't just get up and walk to go get some food, who can't just, who can't leave the bed. You probably see it more now than what you would have, like before you wouldn't have noticed. Yeah, absolutely. And laying in bed all day with without being able to move, uh, without with having many things attached to me, all different tests done every few hours, it is extremely depressing. Yeah. And it is boring and you feel useless. You feel... I felt like I was just laying there for no reason, if yeah. that makes sense. There was... My body had no purpose at all. And... So what about now? What's the purpose now? I would say... My purpose is to care for other people. Yeah. Um, I understand how it feels now and I understand how upsetting it is to not be able to do those little things in life. Yeah. And I would really, really like to care for people in that way that can't do those things anymore. Yeah. And um, it's just really helped me to understand how important the little things in life are. So before my car accident, it was just the day before, I was worried about my brand new job. I was worried about, you know, how am I going to pay off my car? How am I going to get to work every day? All these things that in the end don't really matter at all. And I never took time to just realise, but I'm okay. I'm physically okay and, you know, I was financially okay and I didn't think I was. And just those little things I never focused on before and now I do. Mm. And I really, really encourage anyone that's listening to really think of the little things in life, like getting up to go and get some food, being able to drive. I lost my ability to drive for six months. And... I didn't realise how much I loved getting in the car to just go for a drive before. Yeah. So I really encourage people to think about the little parts of their life that are actually so special. It is just sometimes hard to realise. Absolutely. And that's what I, where we're going this morning, guys. I think Abby's hit the nail on the head. It's those gentle reminders we need sometimes to go, what really matters? Let's go back to the basics. Let's work out what actually matters. You know, she's right. They're going to go to the, the fridge and go, what do I want to, pick? What do, you know, what will I eat now? Or, what, you know, or go and actually, Georgia said that last week, she was talking about that same thing and that concept of, I'm just going to go and wipe down the bench. Whereas, you know, there's moments in life where we can't physically do that. So make a list, make a list today. Make today a day to start honouring the life and the gift that you've been given in life. If you don't do it already, make a list. The things that you're grateful for, the things that give you proof that you are still here and um yeah it's certainly that is a, a beautiful way to counteract that mental health stuff that can be weighty and messy if you're someone who is a young person that's a great place to start too. look at your life what things you're grateful for you know the fact that you do have a job or you don't have a job or you're still working towards a job wherever you are there's something to be grateful for because there's always an opportunity to spin the thinking into something that is positive and um yeah thank you for being real and honest and just so open with us all right guys we're gonna get out of here for a bit and i will be back to close in a little while i'll see you guys enjoy the song i'll see you soon and that was heartbeat by mosaic msc guys i'm lindy i'm your sunday morning host here at rima cc i hope you're having a beautiful morning hope things are going pretty well for you uh and Thank you for being a part of our morning. I hope things are going, yeah, as I said, pretty well, reasonably okay. And actually, even more than that, I hope you're actually having a really good day. I hope this is just the beginning of a fantastic uh, opportunity for celebrating life. Guys, that's kind of what we're talking about in the next few weeks. We've been talking about it now for the last three weeks. Celebrating life, honouring life, respecting life. Um, I hope you are able to do that. I have introduced my daughter before, Abby. Uh, she's been with with me this morning. We've been talking about all things sort of youth-based, sort of from her perspective, the things, the pressures that our youth are exposed to by being aware of the things that they are dealing with, the pressures that they are um, living with and amongst uh, 
I think we can be very mindful of how we can make life better for them. And uh, the, the better that they can find life, the more they can embrace it. And that's what we're talking about is how do we flip that switch from this society or this drive in society to almost promote, it's almost like everything's normalised to just be in this uh, this period of depression to a point where it can pull you down and there's no there's no spin on that there's no no need to uh, counteract it so we as a, a church we as a, a people of of our the Christian faith have responsibility God has given us a gift he's given us life he's given us opportunities as I said when we first opened a moment ago we have an opportunity today today is Sunday it is an opportunity to celebrate what God has given us. So I hope and pray you're able to do that. I hope you're able to make the most of just those gentle reminders that Abby's given us today of, you know, the small things, the small things in I want to go and make myself a sandwich. I want to be able to go to the toilet. I want to do whatever I want to do. And um, just the fact that you've got, you're able to breathe, that's a gift in itself. It's something to be honoured. Uh, Abby, one more thing I want to ask you, and this is just because you happen to be a pastor's kid. So I, um, we're talking to more likely to be more sort of people of the Christian faith. We're talking about pressures. We're talking about youth. We're talking about that sort of stuff. As a pastor's kid, what sort of pressures do you think? Do you think other other pastors' kids are exposed to? I know, growing up, um, I definitely not all the time, but I have had different experiences with pressures as being a pastor's kid. Yeah. Um, I've had many people um, expect that, just the little things like expect that I know every part of the Bible. Yeah. Expect that I know uh, our family. You don't. You're saying you don't. (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately, no, I'm not that good. (laughs) Oh, well, it's, yeah. They expect that, you know, our family sits down and has a prayer night every night. I've heard all different things like that before. And it's not real. It is not real. I'm sure there are some families out there that are like that, yeah. but that's not our family. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have definitely been commented on the way that I dress in church, yeah. um, and that does upset me to an extent because I'm just dressing in what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. Um, never do I think I'm wearing anything inappropriate to church. Yep. Um, and I wouldn't. If I believe it was inappropriate, I wouldn't wear it. Mm. Um, so I have definitely had a lot of comments on the way that I look, um, down to little things, um, tattoos, piercings. Um, and I, that's, that's just from me. <laughs> that That is from my mum, but <laughs> um, I've definitely had comments from people from church um, and um, that believe that that is not what I should be doing with my body. And I do understand that to an extent, um, but there is definitely a pressure to be the best version of yourself. Yeah. Um, and always be the best version of yourself. Yeah. So, and I have not always experienced that. There are some beautiful people in church that understand that I am human yep. and I am like any other teenager out there. Yep. Um, but there's definitely some people in church that do believe that I should dress a certain way, I should act a certain way, um, I should be very, very knowledged um, on Christianity. And I am still learning. I am still learning so much. And I think that's the point is we just got to love each other where we are. It doesn't yep. matter how, if we're young, if we're old, if we've got different, you know, like Abby said, our family is, I would say our family is not the typical, what you see as the typical Christian family. Probably I've, in the last few years, I would say I probably, probably become more of that than <laughs> I care to admit. <laughs> But in terms of just doing life, we're just an everyday family. We're just, you know. And one thing I'd like to add um, in that, um, if you see youth coming into your church or your group that typically don't look the way that you agree with, let them join and let them come in because thank God that they're there. Absolutely. They could be somewhere else and I think youth really, really need to feel loved and they really need to feel attention. Mm. And when they're not getting that, they will leave. Yeah. And and that is realistic because 
attention is such a big thing for youth. We just need someone to care about us, need someone to love us. Yeah, you're so hard you, work, aren't you? We are hard work. <laughs> That's what you're trying to say. <laughs> but if you see someone come into church and you think, oh, they shouldn't look like that, yeah. they shouldn't dress like that, why are they acting like that, just love them, yeah. just let them come into church, just talk to them like any other person um, because... Like I was talking about with social media, um, with friends, with body types, you just want to feel normal. Mm. And I think that is the biggest thing. Everyone wants to feel normal. Everyone wants to feel accepted. Yep. So just accept them. And yep. and thank God that they're there. They're at church. Absolutely. If, if you don't believe they're doing the right thing, at least they're in the right place. That's exactly right. Yeah. See, she's pretty wise, isn't she? <laughs> For 18, I'm pretty impressed with her wisdom. <laughs> she must have got that from Mike, so. <laughs> no, she's done well. Uh, guys, I think she's right. I think we have an obligation. We have a need to love our youth as best as we can. And we don't have to understand. We don't have to understand, you know, why they're making the decisions they are at different times. we just got to love them and hear them out, listen to them. And, um, you know, they, they offer us one of the best things I've ever heard someone say about that period of time is I worked with someone back in Western Sydney who said I love working with teens because they just have so much hope and that's what life should be life should be about hope it should be about being drawn to hope new beginnings opportunities it should be about joy in those situations that are, are really really you know they can be really really hard but it's about finding those opportunities for joy I want to say thank you again, Abby, this morning for just sharing your heart, your wisdom, your experiences, and just being very real with us because it takes a lot. So thank you. Thank Anything you, you want to add? Me. No, just thank you for having me. Oh, um, anytime. I really, really encourage people to look at the little things in life. Yeah. Um, and, if, yeah, if there's two things I could say out of this is look at the little things in life. There is a positive in everything, even if it is so hard to find it. Yeah. And treat people exactly how you would want to be treated. Mm. So if you really want to help youth, treat them as if they are normal. Mm. That is one thing that everyone wants to feel. Everyone wants to feel normal. Yeah. Everyone wants to feel like they belong. Yeah. So treat people like they belong. Yeah. Beautiful advice. All right, guys, I'm looking forward to next Sunday. You have a fantastic week. Have a fantastic Sunday. Thank you again. Thank you, Abby. Thank you for, uh, let's just be thankful, hey? Enjoy life. I'm going to see you guys back here next Sunday. Uh, have a good one. See you guys.